Hello and welcome to the Legend Store channel. I'm Joe. Today we're going to talk about this OTP 23, Creating a Fictional Historical League, which is part three, uh, which is technically going to be the wrap up, right? So we're going to go through it. We're going to go from the very beginning to the very end. So there'll be some repeat of what, what you saw in one and two, um, but not a lot, because I just want to go through this is the complete wrap up, kind of how you do it, A to B or A to Z rather. And um, I may do a part four. Kind of an addendum, which would be, what if you wanted to do a fictional players in a historical setting, completely historical setting? So we're talking about Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, Negro Leagues, all of it. Um, it's possible to do that. So I may do a part four with that if uh, if it looks like there's you know interest in it from people. So if you are interested in seeing something like that, please post a comment to this video. I'll see it and say. You know, say, hey, I would love to see a part four talking about, you know, an MLB minor league setup, uh, you know, full historical setup, essentially with teams moving and everything just as they did historically, but with fictional players, because obviously that's an attractive option for a lot of people too. Um, you know, see how you can have your own, you know, who's going to be your Babe Ruth, who's going to be your Jackie Robinson, you know, and so on and so forth going forward through baseball history. So if you'd like to see that, please comment below and I'll uh, see about making a fourth video in this series. Otherwise, this is going to be the last episode. Um, and like I said, we're just going to kind of go through A to Z, show you how to do it. We're going to cover some old ground and some new ground. I'll also talk about if you want to bring it into an online league environment, how you do that. So without further ado, let's get it going. I'm going to take myself out of the shot so you get a full screen view here of our OTP game. So what we're going to do is we are going to go with a new custom game like we did before. We are going to skip the challenge mode. Okay, now we're going to go advanced mode like we did earlier. Our league name is Mythic League, or game name rather, is Mythic League Baseball. Our starting year is 1881. I think there's a bug that's going to reset this to 2022. We'll see. Okay, so now that we have this, we have to add a league. Okay, so again, Keep in mind, game name is what your league fi save file is going to be. It's going to be the name of the directory and saved games inside the OTP data uh, folder. Um, the league will be the actual like MLB or uh, Eastern League, Pacific Coast League, whatever your, your league is going to be named. So I'm going to use the um, league creation wizard. You could actually do a, a default fictional league, and I'll show you that anyway. Because what that's going to do is it'll just kind of build in. It's loading all the names and everything, right? So now, again, it went back to 2022, so we'll change that here. Now I'm going to go into Advanced. Actually, I'm going to go into uh, League and Structure here, right? So let me go back to this one just to keep things kind of simple here. So we go one League. I want one Division. I want eight teams, right? So now the nice thing is you can like add and remove leagues in this step, in the setup step, so that um, you can tweak it before you actually create the league. Once you create a league and you, then you go and delete leagues and add teams and move teams around and delete teams, that's kind of, it all gets stored in the database. Now there's ways to purge it out of there if you wanted to. But like your team team numbers, for example, you created a full MLB setup with, you know, full minors and everything. You might have, you'll have well over 100 teams. And then you decide, hey, I don't want the Appalachian League or something. So you delete that league the, the, and the teams that are in that league. There'll be a gap in your team numbers, right? The team numbers start at one and go to however many teams there are in the, in the universe. Um, so if you were to delete the Appy League and it had teams 180 through 187 or something in it, you then have a gap that start that started at 179 and went and then skipped over and went to 188. Not a real big deal, um, just something to keep in mind that you're going to have a hole basically if you do it that way. So once you do this right, we kind of did it with the wizard before. This is maybe a little bit easier if you're willing to just come in and say I don't want two divisions or two sub leagues rather, and two divisions per sub league with four teams each. I want one sub league. One division, eight teams, or whatever your setup may be. You might want to have, you know, like an MLB 1969 style, where it was two sub leagues with uh, two divisions each of six teams. You know, 
Um, however, whatever format you wish to use is, is definitely a possibility. So I'm going to go with my American Alliance again, spell it correctly. It is a major league. Now you can actually have custom league na level names rather. So if you wanted to call this something other than major league, you could do that. Um, and you can also have an abbreviation. So, um, you know, ML or something if you wanted to. All right, we talked about the, the League Nation in part one, so I won't really go over that. Uh, regions, we kind of discussed that a little bit. Um, that's kind of the more slightly advanced thing. I'll maybe talk about that, but for, for my purposes right now, I just want a United States League. Um, and you can put teams in other countries, even though the league itself is the United States League. Like if I wanted to add teams in Canada or Mexico or even somewhere else, you can do that. Um, parent League. No parent league, this is our top level league. League reputation. So this is kind of um, when players look for places to go, places to sign. If you have a league with a higher reputation, they're more likely to go to that league than to go to a league with a lower reputation. So if you wanted to have a setup where you had, you know, several quote unquote major leagues, um, like say in the 1880s when the American Alliance came in and I mean the American Association, I'm sorry, came in and competed with the National League. Um, the National League's reputation was probably a 10 if you wanted to apply some this scale to it. It was a 10 because it was the best league in the, in the world, right? The American Association might have been like a 7 or an 8 because they rated players. They got some National League players to come over and play with them. But the reputation, because it was new and the NL was somewhat established by, you know, 1882 or so, then, you know, you get you get the idea that the players might look at it. And, of course, money is part of it too, right? If, you know... If the American Association's reputation is lower, but they're paying more money, well, then, hey, I'll go take the more money. Maybe. Depends. Right? Because football players are people, too, and they're complex and everything. And the game, I guess, tries to simulate that to some extent. You know, um, the, the likelihood of a player signing somewhere. Sometimes they do things that don't make a whole lot of sense. You're just looking at dollars. But um, real people do that, too. So... That's a little bit of, of a realistic feature, I think. All right, so once we have all this, right, then we can come in and we look at our Teams tab. So again, I, I just put the same thing in here. Just wipe out that, and then I had my League, which was Albany, Baltimore, Boston, Brooklyn, New York, Philadelphia, Providence, and Washington. All right, so now I have my teams. Now we go to the rules tab, okay? So um, it might actually be easier to adjust this stuff after you create it because then you'll be able to pull in rules um, and settings and things uh, based on the year. But if we wanted to, we could say, you know, run, we're not using the DH. Modified extra innings, no, we're not allowing ties either, right? For roster size, I go smaller, right? We're in the, we're in the 19th century, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with 18. Okay, and all of these things can be adjusted after creation, just keep that in mind. Uh, international complex, we, we don't really have one, so I'm just going to set that to the lowest value. You can have a reserve roster. Um, I'm going to set that to 15 as well, just, just because I can. Spring roster size, you can actually set your ages. Uh, if you want a league that's more like a high school league, you can set the minimum to 14 and the maximum to 18 and so on, things like that. Um, for a pro league, you don't really need that unless you want to say, I don't want any players under the age of 18. You can set a minimum age. They have to be 18 to be in the league. Um, that's a possibility as well. You can have foreign players on the active roster, a limit on that. Like in Japan, they have a limit on how many non-Japanese players can be on a team. You can have that in your league as well if you wish. Uh, the injured list, I usually do because I do, a um, when I run an online league, uh, my sims generally are a week in length, so seven days. So I will make the uh, the DL typically 14. That way, when a guy uh, is, is back, he can come off. Um, if it's a short-term injury. Obviously, longer-term injuries, 
it, it doesn't, you know, your mileage is going to vary, basically. Um, expanded injured list length, 60 is the default. I don't see any more need to change that. Do we want trading? Yes, we do. Here's a trade deadline. Uh, do you want to allow to trade um, other with other leagues? I can leave that on right now. We're not going to really have another league, at least not initially. Um, trading recently drafted players. I'm actually not going to have a draft, but I will just set this to the media because it, it, it's just how I would want it. Um, early days, no, no player rights, essentially. I will allow injured players to be um, traded. I'll leave the trade draft pick trading off because, like I said, I'm not planning on having a draft. And again, all of this stuff can be edited after the fact. Uh, you can start off one way and then flip something on later. So you can go from reserve clause to free agency and so on. Uh, all possible. This game is very, very customizable even after it, a league has been created. Uh, if you have AI teams, you can set their frequency for trading from you know any of this in here. Again, early days, not a lot of trading going on. I'm going to put almost never. Um, I'm going to turn the draft off, which actually removes a bunch of you know draft related options here, right? You can say, I want to disable the automatic creation of free agents. I'm actually going to turn that off. Um, here's our draft date. How many rounds? Uh, do you want to use the regional system? So again, th the game has regions built into it. Um, and that allows you to say, you know, uh, you can have a regional round and you assign your teams to a region. So, you know, New York could only draft from New York State or something like something along those lines, right? Because each state can be set up as a region. Uh, you can also set up regions within the country and you could create that. You can create custom regions as well. So if you wanted like a tri-state region, let's say, around the New York City area with Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York in it, you can do that. Um, and so on. So it's very, very flexible. But, um, you know, then you say how many rounds of players you want generated. Um, typically, it's good to have at least the same number here. So if you have five rounds, you want at least five generated, maybe even a little more. So you have some free agents after the fact if you would wish to have some. Um, and then you can say how many you want to be high school, how many you want to come out of JUCO, um, how, how long before the draft you want the players to appear because that will allow your GM or yourself, if you're playing solo, to kind of, you know, have time to scout these guys before you draft them. So you can customize that as well. And then you can have the ability to turn on or off the advanced draft e-signing, which means that you get uh, compensated if you can't sign them. Um, that basically involves the bonus system. So if you want to have signing bonuses, you leave that on, and then maybe you can't get a guy to sign with you, and he ends up going back, back to school, essentially. Um, and comes back the next draft or, th or three years later if he goes to college out of high school. The game simulates all this stuff. So you would then have the ability to, uh, to turn this on and have that kind of thing happen and you get a, comp comp a compensation pick in the draft, the next draft, based on not being able to sign somebody if it was in the first few rounds. And then a baseline, right? So we're going to do finances next. That's the next tab. Um, Major league deals for draft picks. If you want a guy to be able to sign a big league contract right out of the draft, you can check that. Um, expansion teams, draft first. So if you're in an expansion year, do you want your expansion teams to pick before everybody else? Turn that on. And then they had the draft lottery is brand new for this year. Um, and I haven't actually even used it yet. I'm not going to use it now because I'm not going to turn the draft on for this league. But I just kind of wanted to quickly go over the, the settings there for the draft. All right. Financial tab. So here's where we can easily say, I want, oh, and they even broke this up by error. See, this is actually the first time I'm looking at this, but you come in here, you hit 1881. Now it's going to pull in all the, all the, uh, all the information for 1881. And if you wonder where that information is stored, if I come here um, into the, I'm in my out of the park developments, OTP 23. This is where my game data is installed, right? Data and then database. There is a financials text file right here. When you open this up, and it's a comma delimited file, and this is the old way of like this is what the name file used to look like, and the school file used to look like back in the old days. Um, so you have, you know, if you open this in um, a spreadsheet program, Excel or you know uh, Google Sheets or any of the free kind of Excel, Excel-like programs. 
you can uh, you can make this into columns, and then you'll have the header at the top. So it's year, the the coefficient, um, and then you know each one of these explains what like salaries for coaches and players are, and so on. Suggested ticket prices and everything. So you can see, you know, it starts really low, and then if you go all the way to 2021, the uh, the coefficient is one. Right? They're not really allowing much for uh, inflation, I guess, between 04 and 2021. But you know, the the numbers go up essentially. So all your salaries are rising and things like that. So this is where you would find that, and you can edit this, and it would use it um, when you create your league. So uh, you can also adjust by factors if you wanted to cut it by 50%. You can say minus 50% and it'll cut everything by 50%. You can do that as well. All right, and then you re you can refresh. So if you change the factor or something, you hit this refresh button, it's gonna update these values so that you see what you did to it. Um, so here, I'll actually do a little a minor adjustment now and then hit refresh and it changes. Uh, it didn't really update because I think it updated when I did that. But if you mess around with the settings manually down here, you can hit this and it'll um, it'll update. So then you have your attendance baseline, um, ticket price. It seems kind of a little high. I'm going to set this to 25 cents. Um, teams may change. That's up to you if you want to be able to change it or if you're running an online league, if you want your GMs to be able to change their ticket prices, you leave that checked on. Um, you can set how much the visitor gets of their gate share. And you can apply gate share to season tickets as well. That's off by default. I usually leave it off. Now here's the financial system, okay? So you want it on or off. You can play without money at all. And just kind of go through and you know nobody will ever become a free agent you don't have to worry about if you're making money or any of that stuff it's all off um you could have manual inflation this would be more useful in a, like a modern league where you wanted to go beyond 2022 into 23 24 25 so on how much do you want inflation to to raise uh, everything you can build that in here there'll be you know a, a from and a two kind of within that range and then um do you want reserve clause? I do, right? So turning that on turns off a bunch of stuff too. So let's turn that back on. Hit the wrong button here. If we turn this off, right? You have days for um, per year of service. How many years before you can become a free agent? Uh, do you want to allow players to be posted as free agents prior to them becoming free agents? Uh, posting fee. There's all kinds of stuff in here that I, I'm not going to really go through. If you want to to know more about that, this is all covered in the OTP manual. And um, you can look there and get good information on that stuff. You can also set it up so you can sell players to the other, other leagues and so on. You know, like um, the Japanese leagues would sell players to the major leagues. You know, um, you, can, you can model that as well. And then you have revenue settings underneath. So I'm going to turn this back on which limits a lot of this stuff, right? So now, how much do you have to pay the guy if he gets cut? Nothing. Multi-year contract, no. Guaranteed contract, no. Now, th and this is, you know, in the 19th century, the players were basically almost chattel. They had no rights whatsoever, and they, um, you know, they weren't able to kind of make their own moves. Aside from jumping contracts when a rival league would pop up, which happens fairly frequently in that time period, so they could they did start their own players league which lasted only a year and then went away so um that was their you know kind of trying to take a step towards having their own say in their own future because the reserve clause kind of tied them to an organization for life and it only took almost 100 years for that to go away so uh long gone now uh then you can have a uh, national media contract which would probably be off there was no real national media back then there were the local newspapers there was no radio or television obviously um do you want everybody to share equally it's kind of a moot point for us because this is a zero then you have your media contract for local in reality this would be a zero as well there was, as, as i said there was no radio um teams weren't Teams were looking for coverage from newspapers. They weren't charging anybody anything to cover them or to show them. There was no none of that, uh, you know, retransmission or whatever stuff going on back then. There was nothing to transmit. So these should technically be zero. 
merchandising would probably be zero or close to it. There wasn't a whole lot of merchandising going on. Most of their revenue came through fans coming in through the gate. Okay, do you want your owner to control your budget? Usually I leave that on because the owner, having the owners involved kind of adds another layer of, you know, role playing or complexity to the need. Uh, revenue sharing, I would typically turn this off and I mean, you can have it on and then you can use a luxury tax or a percentage of income. And a cash maximum, how much do you want teams to have in your war chest? This limits people from being able to hoard their money. And money's not real important in this kind of league, but in a, in a more modern league, it would be more important because that would be cash that they could use to buy players with, essentially. Um, then you have budget and you know various budgets for the set, um, development and scouting. Then you have your salary for coaches and your various levels of player quality salaries. So obviously these guys aren't making a whole lot of money. This was, you know, 140 years ago, so the money was a whole lot different than it is now, obviously. You can also have a minimum uh, contract years. What's your maximum contract years? You know, it could be, for me, like two maybe. And then you decide whether or not you want to allow contract extensions or not. Typically, this would probably be off because these guys played a year at a time, year by year. Every year they go in, the GM or the owner tells them what they're getting paid. They either sign or they don't play, basically. Um, and then you could have a salary cap as well. Options. We want a fantasy draft. I do not. I like to have the teams just randomly assigned. Uh, schedule. I want about 70 games, let's say. Season start date. See, now it's um, it's okay. And, and previously it would show 2022, but this, this actually made it right. So you could say I want it to start. I know the season started a little later than it does now. So let's just say it's... Uh, the 20th. I'm just picking this kind of at random. Uh, for start on a certain weekday, we want our season to start on, say, a Tuesday. Let's do that. Um, or to adjust if, the, if there's an actual XML file. Whether you want a balanced schedule or not. Um, I'm going to say my typical series will be two games. We want spring training. Um, I'm going to turn this off for now. But then you can also pick the length, but I'm turning it off for now. Um, and I'll turn that back on later. Um, we're not going to have an all-star game. If you did, you can do all kinds of things like determine if it's automatically scheduled, whether or not it determines home field for the World Series, whether or not you want your managers to vote, um, popularity, uh, you know, because players have popularity ratings, the roster size, for so the teams to be represented with, Obviously, all this kind of stuff. You can also have the home run derby and everything, but I'll turn that off. Playoffs, you can actually turn off playoffs, which I'm going to do when I have one lead. There won't be a playoff. Um, you can break ties with your tiebreaker. Then you'd be able to name your league, your, your series, uh, each round. If you have multiple rounds, you'd be able to name the round, uh, the format, and, you know, staggering the start date if you have multiple sub leagues and so on. So there's a lot of um, things you can set here. I'll turn that off, as I said. Then you can have whether or not you want the league, the game, to automatically evolve your league. So if you're looking for something more dynamic and not a control freak like I am, you would let the game do it, and the game will move teams around and expand your league and do, the, do things like that. I am turning that off because I want to be in charge. Um, so now you can have your your league progressing settings, which is, this is revamped from previous versions as well. Um, do we want to adjust the league strategy every year? Yes. Do I want imported financial settings? Yes. Do I want to adjust league total modifiers for accuracy? Intended for fictional historical leagues. Hey, that's us, so yes. Automatically import historical player creation modifiers. Do you want your players to be created so that they fit the historical era? That's another yes for us. Um, do you want to import the real rookies? No. Do we want to randomize? No. Uh, disable the amateur draft in order to assign. That's if you're using real players. So um, we're not checking any of these on. Now you can also have your awards, right? I'm going to turn these all off. We're not having awards initially, but you can have awards. Um, yeah, I can turn it on, I guess. We're also not going to have a Hall of Fame initially. Then you have milestones. 
this is just kind of you know um, the game will track milestones and making new stories about them. Player reaches 300 home runs or whatever. Okay, so those are your options. You're gonna go to players. Um, now this is where you're gonna create. This kind of determines your creation, right? So you're creating a player at the age of whatever minimum age, maximum age. Leave it at zero. There is no age limit, right? Um, and you have to set both, otherwise it's ignored or it tells you, right? Power D currently has no age limit set in it. Now, default player origin, okay? So we have the US, Dominican, uh, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Canada, Mexico, Cuba, and Australia. We can edit this and say, I want, um, we can actually do a function, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, reset to 100%. United States, and so that becomes 99, and then random is one. And let's just see this quality here. So if we sort by baseball quality, these are your top uh, baseball countries by quality. So all the five stars were the ones that were in that initial list. And then you also have, um, well, Australia was in the list too, and it's a four. But um, you can kind of say what you want. So if I wanted to add Canada, let's just add Canada and say we want, you know, 2% from Canada, and we'll make this 97%, and then we have 1% from other places. That'll be our setting, and I'll hit OK. So now I'm drawing players from the US and Canada. Done. Generate an international free agent. I actually do not want this, but you can do this, and it will generate them from these countries. Um, so you can come in here and edit these, and it's the same kind of thing. Where do you want your amateur free agents to come from who aren't from your your pool up here? So I'm actually turning this off because I don't want any, so I'm going to put none. And then international scouting discoveries, I also want none. Generate established free agents, I want none. Generate free agents from independent leagues, I want none. So I turn all of those off. Now you can do whatever you wish, right? Obviously. Um, this is just the way I'm doing it for my league. Now you have your uh, creation modifiers. So if we're using historical, then these will change over time, right? So avoid Ks is really high. Um, obviously today, with the way the game is today, this would be a lot lower. Um, pitching movement is high. They didn't give up a lot of home runs. Pitching movement, if you didn't know, and many OOTP players do know, movement helps keep home runs down. So then you also have things like stamina and running speed and so on. So these are just kind of creation modifiers. And you also have uh, league total modifiers and those two things work together to kind of generate your statistics. Speaking of which, we go to the next tab. This is our stats and AI tab. So what kind of stats detail do we want? We want very high, that's the highest level, right? Now, uh, as far as strategies, Again, uh, it, it's already set for this because we already did this kind of in, in a previous step. But if I hit this, it's going to strategy, financial, and player creation yet, yeah, right? So it changes everything that we already changed, basically. So we have a three-man default rotation, starting rotation mode default, right? So you can have, you can change this for whatever you wish. But that kind of is like at the league level and what is the default, right? So the default is this. Um, it's a three-man rotation, and it's basically just rotation, essentially. Um, allow starters in relief is yes. Uh, obviously, guys played, the teams were smaller. Guys had to be a lot more flexible in their roles than they are today. Today's game is obviously very, very specialized. That was not the case, particularly in the 19th century. Number of relievers, two. Um, in reality, they probably wouldn't have actually even had anybody that would have been considered a reliever. Everybody was a starting pitcher, and they only had maybe two of those, two or three at the most. And then the number of position players, 13. So we're looking at those. That's 15, and three starters is 18. Um, DH leagues, it's the same, but it doesn't matter because we're not a DH league. Um, so now for this, the hook starting pitcher default, relief pitcher default, I, I would probably even go and change those to like really slow because they didn't make pitching changes very often. Guys were pretty much Ironmen. They'd make 50, 60 starts and they'd pitch the whole game. 
So um, you, you can do it however you wish. That's just my take on it. So use of relievers, very rarely. Use of closers, very rare, rarely. You know, may, maybe I'll just make it slow. That way, if a guy is getting hammered, they might pull him out, right? Because that's really what the hook is. That's, you know, how, how soon do I take this guy out if he's getting shellacked, basically? Uh, use of closers, rarely. Pitcher stamina is very high. Obviously, just based on what I just said. Pinch hitting, rarely. Pinch hit for position players, very often. They did play small ball, what we would consider small ball today. They called it inside baseball in the 19th century. So it was a lot of bunting, moving guys around, stealing, um, you know, no home runs. So you tried to generate offense by doing things creatively, whether bunting or, you know, on the base paths or whatever. Defensive substitutions, normal skin bases, often hit and run very often, bunting normal. Uh, ban infield shifts. Yes, they weren't using infield shifts back then. So, um, catcher framing. That's a new, a new feature. Um, we'll leave it at none because catchers weren't framing pitches back then. Um, in the early days of baseball, the batter would actually ask for the ball in a specific spot, and the pitcher would try to put it there. Um, it was a lot different than it is today, where the target, where you know, you're trying to either avoid contact or make bad contact if you're on the pitching side. And catchers can frame, you know, catchers have a skill of, you know, making a pitch look like it's a strike maybe when it isn't, you know. So um, that's the, uh, this is new, as I said, and you can turn this to whatever, but they left it at zero none, which is fine with me. Um, as I said, catchers weren't really, none of the positions were really as specialized as they are now. You know, errors were high. Uh, the defensive aspect of the game wasn't particularly fully developed yet. Guys didn't wear gloves, um, so imagine trying to catch a baseball barehanded, um, some of which would have been smoked just as they are today. Maybe not quite as hard, but pretty hard. Um, and you can understand that the defense was not anywhere near uh, as accomplished as it is now. Uh, do we want to automatically adjust? This I've selected previously, and it says yes. Now you can lock the league totals. Um, and it applies to any affiliated leagues, so any minor leagues that would be attached to this, you can do that. I typically do not do that. And then our league totals. So this is going to be basically based on what happened in real Major League Baseball that year, number of at-bats, hits, and so on, and it figures all this stuff out. And then it's going to adjust this, and it usually does that right on opening day. It looks at the rosters. At least this is how I understand it to work. It looks at your roster and your ratings and determines... Uh, you know, how those ratings fit in with this this particular distribution of statistics, and then it's going to put modifiers in to kind of, you know, if you have players who are home run hitters and you're playing in a non-home run hitter league, such as this one, where, you know, out of 41,000 at-bats, only 178 home runs were hit, um, and they were probably almost all of the inside the park variety to top that off. But anyway, um it's going to look at the home run, the power rating, basically, of your hitters. And if you have a lot of power, it's going to, you know, make this modifier really low to make sure that those guys aren't actually hitting a bunch of home runs. So it's it's a very complicated system, and it can take a lot of uh, trial and error to get it to actually work correctly, especially with minor leagues. The major league level, it does pretty well. The game historically has done pretty well with that. Um, I haven't actually played a full league in 23 and, and gone through seasons and tested things and so on to see how it works and which one it's any better or worse than it was previously. But um, my his, my you know previous experience with 22 and earlier is that you need to kind of tweak the minor leagues a little bit and make sure you get them get them right because otherwise you'll get some wacky stuff going on. And then this is just the same kind of thing that, you know, for other things that are outside your typical results of plays, right? So stamina and ground ball percentage, wild pitches, balks, pass balls, sacrifices, stolen base attempts. Attempts are down a little bit, success rate, uh, extra base hit percentage, you know, fielding double. This is more in-depth than it used to be. Um, as they continue to tweak the engine and add new things and add new ways to customize it, it, it this game gets better and better in this area every every year, it seems. Um, and then your your position modifiers for uh, for plays and errors, essentially. So um, 
I'm going to leave all of that. And then this is all done, basically. And the next step will be to hit Start Game. And I'm going to play in Commissioner mode. Uh, it's got my name and everything. I'll just leave all this. And this will probably get to play as a GM. And I probably won't even have a team. In fact, I know I won't have a team. If I bring this league into an online league, which is what I want to do ultimately, and I'm going to do a lot of editing. Uh, this is um, kind of a preliminary, just get everything set up, and then I'm going to tweak a bunch of stuff probably. Um, just to kind of keep things, to, to put things in the way I want them exactly. And again, if there's interest in seeing that kind of stuff, I can always do another another edition of this where I show you kind of what I do to tweak players and stuff after creation. So I'm just going to hit start game. It's going to do its thing. It's going to load all the, it's going to make logos and uniforms and all kinds of stuff and name players and create the players and all this, all that stuff takes place. And now you have, you know, you have a default logo and here's our league, right? And we have the one league and the clubs, we have the various teams, right? If you went to Albany, you can look in the settings and it will tell you, see, it's pretty good at recognizing the city. If you pick Springfield, I don't know which Springfield you'd get because there's 20 something Springfield in the United States. So you're taking your chances. Um, the ballpark stuff here, this is a little new. You used to be able to, um, this was not here and you would just pick the ballpark. Um, I'm not going to go into editing ballparks again. If somebody wants a part four slash part five, depending on if I do the historical one, let me know and I'll do one uh, where I can talk about things like that. Like how do you do ballparks? How do you do uniforms? Um, you know, there's a lot involved and these can kind of get long and I don't want them to get so long that people are like falling asleep. Um, this one already feels very long. So uh, again, all of this stuff is editable and here's where you can assign a region, right? If we wanted the U.S. state to be our region, you know, this is in New York state. If I just keep my mouse from jumping around. Here's New York, you could do that. You can also create your own regions. I can show you how to do that as well in a future video. Again, if there's interest in that, please comment. If you've watched this long and wanna see it, I will I will do it because kudos to you for watching <laughs> this long. Uh, most people watch my videos for about eight minutes and then uh, bail. <laughs> so I'm glad to see uh, if you're still watching, kudos to you and thank you. Um, but you can look at the organization. This has kind of changed a little bit. It used to be a uh, transactions tab, and then you would be able to look at your rosters, right? So there's all kinds of things. The, uh, the screens have gotten a little different. You can still get at the screens you could before. It's just that they're, they're laid out differently, right? So we have all our, you know, um, all our stuff here. We don't have any players. Um, but we should, I believe, have, yeah, so there are players. And here are our players. And you can look at the players that are in the league and what team they're on. And you can see their, their ratings because I didn't turn the ratings off. I, I'm going to play a um, no potential. We'll have overall ratings, which is current ratings, but no potential. Um, and, and use stats and then the GMs will have to kind of trust their scouting to say whether or not, you know, this guy is going to be good. Um, because Figment League, my other league, has is stats only. So there is no current and no potential. And you're relying con totally on the statistics that the players are putting up and the, um, the scouting assessments. This league, Mythic League, is going to have overall visible um, on a very small scale, like one to five, and then potential will be off. And you'll have to rely, again, on scouting and statistics to some extent to determine a player's worth. Um, this is, you know, the kind of the next evolution, the next step, um, almost an experiment, I would say. A twist on what I do with Figment. Figment's been really successful. The guys that are in that league love it. I'm hoping that, you know, Mythic can be something similar to that with a slight, you know, slight twist. Um, it's always fun to me to play a fictional league and put it in kind of a historic framework. Framework, And I've done um, the other thing I was talking about earlier with a MLB setup and fake players. That can be a blast as well. So uh, it depends on what, what you want to do. But anyway, 
Our next step would be if we wanted to turn this into an online league, we have to go to league settings. And then there's this online league tab here, right? So all you have to do is hit this button, right? And then you can say whether or not this actually doesn't work or it hasn't in the past. Like human, G human managers don't get fired um, in an online league, at least not in, not in my experience. And I've read on the OOTP boards that it's not possible. So I'm not sure why that checkbox is there because it's a little misleading. Um, but anyway, so once you do that, you have to set a password and I'm not going to do that right now, but, um, you know, you can just say, let's just say password, right? And so I have a password now and, um, then you have to do your settings. Okay. So these are pretty straightforward. Um, if you know a little bit about how websites work. You're going to need some kind of host to have the ability to send files back and forth and to have your HTML reports. Now you can do something like um, Stats Plus, which is a service, you pay for it. Um, it's a yearly subscription kind of thing. And basically they'll help you set this up and you can send and you'll, you'll basically your site lives on their site. I have my own um, web server. I'm a programmer, that's my occupation. I can do this web stuff. So I do it all myself, um, but there are options out there for hosting for OTP leagues if you do a little digging. Uh, so you'll need to know your, your, your host, which is going to probably be your domain name um, or your host's domain name. Uh, 21, port 21 is the, the, the normal port. You'll, you'll need a username and a password for your FTP because you're going to be moving files back and forth between your computer and the, and the web server. So. This is for your league file. And then they kind of, you'll have a path on your server and the server's just a computer and it's got a path system just like your, your desktop or laptop computer does. Um, you can name your file. You can test it once you've got that filled out. Then you can use FTP as well. Or you can just do it um, HTML mode, which is just you know hitting it like you would a web page or a file on the web and it downloads. That's, that's the simple way. You just tell it the name and the location, the URL to the file, and it will download it. And then your report, how do you want your reports done? You can do this. I use this, the, the MySQL database, um, because it's, a, it's much less uh, resource intensive, file intensive on the server. And, um, but basically you need to know a little bit about how, how um, dynamic websites, PHP based websites work. It's not a, it's not a real big deal and there are tutorials on it on the OOTP boards, um, but you have that option. I would recommend that if you have any kind of technical capability at all. And then again, you would do the same thing, fill out your host and your and your user and password, what kind of FTP, typically passive FTP is, is fine. Um, and then a location and where your report URL, what your report URL will be, which is basically essentially this but instead of HTTP docs or whatever, you'd have your domain name in there. And then this is how your teams, your GMs will send stuff back to you. So essentially this is just their own FTP account. You can use the master one if you wish, or you can set one up for your GMs to use. Um, depends on how security minded you wish to be. Uh, it's probably a good idea to have a separate one that has a little bit less power than your master one or create one for the league itself that you use to upload your files and the GMs also use. Something that can't get in and muck around inside your server basically. You get a very limited scope of what they can access. And then the email setup works the same way if you have uh, SMTP email and all your email providers typically have something where you can do this. So whether it's Gmail or you know uh, Yahoo or uh, Hotmail, Outlook, whatever, they all pretty much have it. You can set this up and then you'll be able to, once your file has been uploaded, your reports generated, everything's on the server, the game will actually send email recaps of that sim to your GMs, which is kind of neat. And the GMs like it because A, they get notified that the sim has been run and hey, I can go grab my file. And B, they get a little nice recap of you know the players that did well, the players that didn't do so well, their scores for the sim and so on. So they get a little information about what happened. So that's very nice. So once you have all that, you can save it and close it. And then the right side is just entering the league name and the website URL. If you have a logo, you put that in here. What kind of league you have, you know, 
fictional um, and so on and then it's basic stuff this is all pretty simple when do you run your when do you run your sims what's your week description how many sims per week and game days per sim for me this would be five and seven i do monday through friday so i put monday you know i put m dash f 6 a.m est or something um and then i would do you know description of the league you do five sims a week you do seven days per sim so that's um that's pretty much it in a nutshell there are other things you can do and again i can talk about this in, a, in another video if, if people want to see another video i really just wanted to kind of go through the whole setup in one go show, show you how this whole thing is done so that you can kind of follow along and do it for yourself and go relatively simple if you want to go more advanced let me know thanks again for watching i'm joe the millennium sport channel Please subscribe, like, spread the word. And again, if you want to see more uh, videos in this series, you know, I'm talking about maybe doing a historical framework with fictional players and or going into some of the more advanced editing stuff about editing uh, ballparks and uniform and things like that. Um, please comment below and let me know. And if enough people want to do it, I'll certainly, I'll certainly make another video or two. Um, so once again, thanks for watching and uh, play ball.